Hi, I want to talk to you today about a cult that is recruiting some of America's best and brightest young people. This cult has centers in every major city and many small towns, and it keeps its victims for years. Those who get caught in its clutches end up coming out years later unemployed, deeply in debt, sometimes even homeless, and physically and mentally battered. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about universities. Universities that dangle the dream of advanced degrees in front of smart and talented people with the promise of illustrious and secure careers in academia at the end of it. They extract years of effort, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in payment, only to eject those masters and PhDs at the end with job prospects, self-esteem, sometimes even physical health, and certainly credit rating virtually shattered. How do I know this? because I myself am an escapee from the university cult. I'm a former tenured professor and department head at a Big Ten institution, and I'm sharing what I saw as a PhD student, a faculty member, department head, and then as someone who left 10 years ago to start a business called The Professor Is In. Now, let me hasten to add, when I say universities indoctrinate smart students into a cult, I don't mean the Fox News claim that so-called leftist professors are imposing Marxism, feminism, and Black Lives Matter on our vulnerable youth. No. What I mean is the professors are selling the lie that pursuing an advanced degree will lead to a prestigious and secure academic career. Academia has not been a secure and viable career since about the 1980s because of 40 years of systemic disinvestment. And with COVID, it has gotten exponentially worse. Between 2009 and 2018, almost all states cut funding drastically, Arizona cut by 55%. Universities are now run on a corporate Walmart basis. Cutting costs is the name of the game, and cutting full-time employees with benefits is absolutely the bottom line. And just like that, just like Walmart at universities, 76% of faculty are hired on a contingent precarious basis without benefits, without full-time secure positions. Right now, only 2 to 7% of people entering PhD programs will go on to get a secure tenure track or tenured position. And yet, almost every one of them goes into these programs believing they're going to be the exception. And they are allowed to believe that by their faculty members and their advisors. And yet, this graph shows in the field of history the vast mismatch between the PhDs awarded and the jobs available for them. This information is not secret. It's shared uh, in the Chronicle of Higher Education, the New York Times. Uh, it's everywhere. But uh, professors don't tell the truth about it. Instead, they like to engage in arcane arguments about should this be called an undersupply of jobs or an oversupply of PhDs. But the stakes are very high. 25% of adjuncts are paid so poorly they qualify for food stamps and welfare. And all of this is funded by catastrophic debt. Grad students only constitute 15% of students, but make up 40% of debt. Grad school debt is the fastest growing debt, and 25% borrow more than $100,000. And full funding is no protection. These quote-unquote full funding packages that departments offer, especially in the humanities and social sciences, they don't cover actual costs. They are not pegged to actual cost of living. So even students with full funding packages still have to take out loans to make ends meet. And of course, COVID has now caused a staggering and unprecedented contraction, the greatest since the 1950s when the Labor Bureau started keeping data. And so this uh, situation I'm describing is going to get exponentially worse in the coming years. Now you might ask, if these students are so smart, why do they allow this to happen? Why do they enter this cult and why do they stay? Well, first of all, they're flattered and groomed by their undergraduate professors for whom the absolute highest praise is, you are so smart, you should go to graduate school. And so starry-eyed and filled with hero worship, young, Students believe them, and why wouldn't they? So they go on into PhD programs like Lambs to the Slaughter. And then, once in those programs, they're encompassed in groupthink, which ties identity to academic achievement. Only academic accomplishments are legitimate. Everything else is a failure. And in fact, um, prioritizing financial compensation or job security is a betrayal of the religious uh, ideology. 
And those who leave or try to do something else are shamed. Your very identity, your sense of self is tied up with academic accomplishment exclusively. So students enter their programs, but they're programs of gaslighting and delusion. And suffering and poverty is not a sign of failure, but a sign of moral righteousness. Self-sacrifice is good, martyrdom is even better. The most famous case, of course, is the catastrophic case of Margaret Mary Voiko, an 83-year-old adjunct in the field of French, who in 1983 died of a heart attack on her lawn after being abruptly let go by Duquesne University, ironically a Catholic university in Pittsburgh, after 25 years of adjuncting. She said teaching is not a profession or a career, it's a devotion, a dedication. It should not be looked on as a job or a source of income. She died destitute. In just last year, someone said to me, Karen, teachers, good teachers give to their students till it hurts. Good teachers don't look at the clock or the bottom line. Adjuncts take miserably low wages because they love their students, unquote. So this way of thinking is alive and well at the present day. Now, love has entered our conversation, and that's because do what you love is the most perfect ideological tool of capitalism. When you do what you love, it hides the fact that if we acknowledged all of our work as work, we would set appropriate limits for it, demanding fair compensation and humane schedules, as Mia Tokumitsu said in her book about the do what you love phenomenon. So martyrdom, in fact, proves your purity. And the greatest victims, those who are the most in debt with the least job security, for them, the delusion of spiritual superiority is really the only thing left to cling to. Now, how do I know that? Because when I left my academic job to start The Professor Is In, my business, coaching grad students and faculty in employability and how to move on and do uh, in their careers, well, I was called many things, but most of all, I was called a grifter. Because to apply careerist thinking to the Holy Mother Church of Academia could only be a lie, a cheat, and a con. As, some, as an adjunct said about me just a few months ago, I do think my adjunct job is morally superior to Kelsky's. In short, by helping people with their careers, I am apparently the Donald Trump of academia. So consequently, for anyone who tries to leave, it does feel like being cast out in deep space, all alone, rejected by everyone. But it should be clear by now, it's academia that's the grift. So what to do? If you are in a graduate program right now, please know that your choice to pursue advanced degrees was an honorable thing. We need people with advanced degrees desperately to solve the urgent problems we're confronted with like global climate change, immigration, the rise of the right wing, and so on. The grift is when the risks of this pursuit are misrepresented and programs and professors gaslight their students. So if you are currently a graduate student, no, you can do something else. You don't need institutional validation. You are already entrepreneurial. You have countless skills that you have mastered on your path. Your worth is not tied to either a degree or an institution or a particular career outcome. Prioritizing a livable income is an honorable choice. You are not becoming a monk. You do not need to take a, pow, a vow of poverty. You can reclaim your own priorities vis-a-vis -vis the cult, and some of those might include getting paid for your work, living in a place you love, not applying to academic jobs, and remembering that you are not alone. There is support, a lot of support out there. For those of you who are students, undergrad students, or parents of students, please ask this. Who's teaching your classes and where is your tuition money going? Because it's not going to the teaching faculty. And tell your legislators to adequately fund higher education. So in conclusion, when the spoken and unspoken message is for people in PhD programs that your entire worth is tied to a career that is no longer viable, know that you are being told a lie. Ask that higher education is adequately funded at the state and federal level. And for all of you who are near the academic cult, you can reclaim your autonomy. You can decide to do something else. You can declare the freedom to move on. Good luck.